morning, adventurers. Good morning. And welcome to Kansas. Over the course of the week, we're gonna be driving our trusty coachman all over this state, and we're gonna squeeze in as many sights as we possibly can. Ow, jeez. I'm trying not to bump our heads along the way. When you think about Kansas, you probably think of its great plains, but I can assure you this state is anything but plain. First off, it has some incredible nature that will completely blow you away. I mean, would you ever guess that Kansas looks like this? It is full of charming little towns that look like they are stuck in time, and also some that look like they're from a different country entirely. It has an amazing culinary scene, and by that we mean they have freaking delicious barbecue. So put on your fanciest cowboy hat. Polish up your shiniest shotgun, and let's go explore the Sunflower State. to our very first stop in Kansas. We have come all the way out to the western side of the state because we hear there's some land out here that's been very bad. <laughs> By that I mean we're going to the Badlands. We made it to the Badlands. And we have it completely to ourselves, y'all. Yeah. This is wild. Yeah, we managed to get up early enough <laughs> so it isn't like blazing hot out here. Oh my God, it's lovely. There's a constant breeze coming through here. All you hear are all the little birds and lots and lots of insects and questionable things scurrying through the brush. <laughs> but how cool is this? It completely blows me away that this is Kansas. I mean, this looks like we're out in the middle of the desert or Utah or something. Yeah, there's even cactus along the trail and everything. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different world here. And then you can see off in the distance, the wheat fields. <laughs> so a long, long time ago, this actually used to be a great sea. You'll see all kinds of different fossils in the area. And they even found one that's dated back to about 85 million years. So that's the timeline we're talking about here, y'all. Y'all, we just made it to the end of the trail and look at this viewpoint, holy moly. Very nice. It's really cool, there's all sorts of birds that make their homes in the Badlands here and you can see they've got little clusters of, I guess, nests that they make out of, I'm assuming, mud and dirt, but it's just so peaceful. Again, we are the only people here. Well, Badlands were a success. It was super cool, but y'all, we're running a little late and we gotta get the heck out of Dodge. We're into Dodge. We're going to Dodge City. Has anyone ever made that joke before? I don't think so. Okay, I'm the first one. Whoa. I just saw that my hair's doing a swoop de doop Dodge City, here we come. Yeah! officially made it to Dodge City and the first thing we wanted to do was come to the Boot Hill Museum. They have this really cool replica of what the original buildings in Dodge City used to look like. They also have this museum that you can walk through and they have all kinds of artifacts from the area. They have these old original guns that the Indians would have used. They have guns that the settlers would have used. They have all this awesome information on the buffalo that used to roam the area. And they have a bunch of original clothing so you can see what they actually wore back in the day. What do you guys think? Would we have totally fit in in the Wild West? <laughs> I think so. I'm your huckleberry. You guys, this definitely reminds me of that time when we visited the chateaus in France and we got all dressed up and went through the castle. but I think I'm stuck in this forever, maybe now. <laughs> I don't know how to get it off. Also, these pants might be a little too big for me. <laughs> you look almost like you're from the 70s. They look like bell bottoms. <laughs> I love it with your baseball cap, too. 
You guys, they may or may not be having a mock gunfight on this little green area in just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very excited about that. All right, we got our photo, we got our beer. Gunfight is about to begin. Y'all, the gunfight was amazing. They used real blanks, so it was so freaking yeah, loud. It, it actually terrifying. terrified me. I think a lot of people screamed the first shot that was fired. Of course, you have to exit through the gift shop, and we noticed <laughs> a magnet wall. And you guys know that we are collecting a magnet from every state we go through. Now, they have some really cool ones, specifically yeah. these ones. We really want Get this the hell out this. of Dodge. <laughs> we're trying to do state-specific for our road trip, so I think we're gonna go with this guy. Yeah. He's pretty classy. And it represents all the things that Kansas is known for. Wheat, tornadoes, sunflowers, <laughs> you know, all the best things from Kansas. Dodge City was founded in 1872. And uh, since then, it's had a pretty rowdy history. It was home to uh, guys like Wyatt Earp and this lovely chap here, a one Doc Holliday. If you've seen Tombstone, you know these characters rather well. I'm your huckleberry. And at one point, this town was known as the most wicked town in the West. Probably because they were very trigger happy, drank a lot, and played a lot of poker. <laughs> We've just been strolling around downtown Dodge City and we are really loving how much they have embraced their history. You know that they rebuilt historic Front Street for the Boot Hill Museum. They also renamed their main street Wyatt Earp Boulevard. There's a road just back there called Gunsmoke, which we're pretty sure is based on the TV series that was based here in Dodge and ran for like 20 years. So they've really just taken their past and run with it. And we are big fans of that. I'm pretty sure the phrase get the hell out of Dodge might have come from Gunsmoke. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. I think it did. I think I read though that they never said hell. That oh, was yeah. an addition later on, <laughs> yeah. but it makes it more powerful, right? Get the hell out of Dodge. Have we said that too many times now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, something tells me you're gonna say it again. <laughs> no, not me. We've been super impressed so far with the RV campsites here in Kansas. That first one we stayed at that was just near the Badlands was right on this beautiful lake and it was like an oasis in the middle of the Prairie Lands. It was awesome. Yeah, and this one in Dodge City obviously is not the prettiest or the most interesting, but it is literally walking distance to the historic district. Perfect when you don't have little R Ruby Suzuki in tow. I know, it's so sad not having a tow vehicle, but we're making it work. And we will be linking to all of our campsites that we stay in throughout Kansas down in the description below. So if you are traveling by van or camper van or something, you can stay at the ones that we've stayed at. Where are we headed next? We're getting the hell out of Dodge. Finally. <laughs> <Nice one. laughs> <laughs> and we're going to Wichita, which is the biggest city here in Kansas. We have made it to Wichita, Kansas, and we are going to go and explore the city. But first, we had to eat breakfast, and so we came to this place called Want Beer Rocks for a beer rock. Would you ever think that this little pastry would be called a beer rock? I still don't understand the term, <laughs> beer rock. So it says that it was brought to Kansas in the 1870s by German Russian Mennonites. So it's like a yeast roll filled with deliciousness. Eric got a breakfast version. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. But I think the stuffing with cabbage is kind of the way to go if you're wanting the OG beer rock. It's so soft and doughy, like pillowy on the outside. Look at this, oh my gosh. There's so much cabbage and beef in there. And then they said there's secret seasoning. It's funny, it's like a whole dinner in a roll. <laughs> it's super delicious, super savory in there. The roll is almost a little bit sweet, but the flavors go so well together. It's like they did the work for me of having to scoop everything up with a roll. They just put it in there for me so I can hold it in my hand. making our way slowly to downtown Wichita. 
and on the way we're walking down Douglas Avenue which is home to like over a hundred murals and you can do a DIY mural tour and see all sorts of things like this. Basically off of pretty much every street, there's some sort of epic mural. Right in the middle of the old town of Wichita is the Museum of World Treasures. And this place is a gem, man. They have all these epic artifacts from all the different ages of time. They have all these like uh, recast dinosaurs. They have some of the original artifacts and bones and fossils. They have all kinds of ancient Egyptian artifacts. You guys, they even have real mummies that you can get very, very close to. They won't let you take pictures of it, but we found a picture online, so I'll just put that on the screen. It really turned my stomach to be that close to it. It's so raw and real and nasty and decrepit. <laughs> this is the stuff nightmares are made of, but man, this place is much cooler than I ever thought it was gonna be. So next up, we wanted to come down to this area, which is right where the Little and the Big Arkansas River meet. And right in the little peninsula in the middle, they have this epic monument called the Keeper of the Plains. And it is very, very grand in real life, much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Also the locals, and by those, I mean all the Uber drivers we've <laughs> had here have been saying Arkansas. So maybe in these parts you pronounce it little and big Arkansas. This must be really confusing to any people who aren't from the USA. We have Arkansas and Kansas, and I guess they call it the Arkansas River in Kansas. I don't know. But this was actually erected in 1974 to celebrate the country's bicentennial. It was created by a local Native American artist and every night at nine in the summer, seven in the winter, they light a fire ring around this statue and it looks super freaking epic. But this is a really cool spot. It's super peaceful, tons of green space. And they actually have a really cool museum right on the water. In fact, in the water called the Exploration Place. It closes in about 30 minutes. So sadly, we kind of missed our window. It closes yeah. at 5 p.m. So, <laughs> but it's just a really epic structure and the architecture is awesome. It's getting really hot out here, you guys. It's so Man, it's like over 100. <laughs> we thought we would do so many more things today, yeah. but it's just brutal. We're trying, but the yeah. heat has other plans. So we're gonna go head back to the RV. <laughs> Babe, you getting those slide outs out anytime soon? Well, I'm not really sure what is happening, but it doesn't seem to be working. Slides might be broken, I don't know. But uh, I guess it's really not that big of a problem because I've been drinking Athletic Greens, baby. I think it's working. You guessed it, Athletic Greens is sponsoring today's video, so we wanted to give them a huge thank you for supporting our channel. AG1 supports your energy, focus, gut health, digestion, and your immune system without having to take a whole bunch of different products or pills. We typically travel with a whole bottle of probiotics, vitamins, and almost daily we are buying a green juice. But with AG1, they combine all of those things in this tiny little packet. Plus this tastes so much better than the typical green juices we get. What do you guys think? Could I be in one of those goofy sport drink commercials? <sighs> Go to the link in the description below or on the screen and get a free one year supply of vitamin D for immune support and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Now give me one so I can actually drink it. Oh yeah, cause this one's all mine baby. Mm. Don't worry, I'll push the slide outs back in. The slide outs aren't really broken, you guys. <laughs> we just broken. made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get you? Well, you guys know that we're in the sunflower state, so we had to make a trip to a sunflower farm, right? Yeah, we came at the perfect time of year because these little suckers are only in bloom really at the end of July and in August. We came about 20 minutes south of Wichita to Klaus Meyer Farm and holy cow, do they have a lot of sunflowers. The sunflower field spans about 40 acres, but from where we're standing, it looks like it goes on forever. So we found out if you just Google sunflower fields in Kansas, you can find them all over Google Maps, but also the tourism board puts a nice little list together of what farms grow them and when they're blooming. And you can actually take these suckers with you. For a dollar a stem, you can take as many sunflowers as you'd like. Y'all, I had visions of us just like frolicking through this field, but 
it's covered in bees and all kinds of other creatures. It's also incredibly windy. There's so much dust that just appeared. <laughs> But it's so beautiful, you guys. To be honest, the minute I got here, I got stung by a bee. And it was actually the first time I've ever been stung in my entire life. Poor guy, he did not like it. Yeah, luckily it was a tiny little bee and I must not really be allergic because it didn't really swell up. That's it right there. <laughs> this type of bee right here is actually the one that stung me. He's got these big yellow legs. I don't know if they're just covered in pollen or what, but those guys are a little aggressive. Stay away from them. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Up, we traveled a little over an hour north of Wichita to Sweden. Just kidding. This is called Little Sweden. It's technically the town of Lindsberg, and it was actually settled by the Swedes in the 1860s. It's pretty wild because even though we are in the middle of Kansas, you definitely feel like you've been transported to Sweden. You get at least Swedish vibes here. Yeah, especially on this street. Is this not adorable? <laughs> it's very cool. It's so funny because we've seen so many Wild West and cowboy inspired decor, and now all of a sudden, you get very European, Scandinavian vibes. Things are even written in Swedish here. Yeah, they it's, embrace it for sure. They do. This town is actually pretty small and there's not too much to see here other than all the little Swedish places like this. There's a handful of those. But just down the way here is a Swedish restaurant or at least mm -hmm. a restaurant that serves a few Swedish dishes. And that's Swedish what we want to try. Swedish American, yeah. yes. <laughs> made it to Crown and Rye and what's so special about this place is that they have a handful of Swedish dishes on their menu that we have confirmed are made fresh every single day. I got the Swedish meatballs you guys. So we got meatballs with some egg noodles in a beef cream sauce. So I'll get some of those noodles, the little petite meatball <laughs> down the hatch. Being transported to Sweden in my mind. We've been to Sweden before, right? Yeah, remember we stayed in that uh, little hut in the woods? Oh, the hut in the woods, how could I forget that? Okay, well I can't remember if we tried meatballs in Sweden, but I can confirm, these meatballs are very, very good. They have a whole bunch of flavor. The cream sauce just adds an awesome creaminess to it. I also got a side of these little potatoes with a little bit of dill on there. These are called farsk potatis. <laughs> For my side, I got road bed salad which is red beet salad with capers, dill, and a hard boiled egg on there. But what I'm really excited about is my main dish, which is caldomar. Caldomar, caldomar. <laughs> it's hard for me to do. This is actually local lamb, beef, and rice wrapped in cabbage, then pan fried, topped with lingonberries, and in a red wine demi-glaze. Perfect bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you being transported back to Sweden as well? You're saying, welcome in, Allison. <laughs> it's so salty and savory, but a little tangy with the red wine in there, and then the berries on top add a hint of sweetness. Since it's called Crown and Rye, we were in a bit of a whiskey mood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What'd you get, the old Manhattan? Old fashioned, baby. Old fashioned, what, boring. I went with the whiskey <laughs> smash. There's some blackberry syrup in here. It is so tangy. Okay, if this is good enough for Don Draper, it's good enough for me. Well, I'll take George Nickel any day. Jeez. Which is the whiskey that's in there. There is one final nature stop that we wanted to make before we leave Kansas, and that is to this amazing place. It is the Tall Grass Prairie, and it is a nature preserve that occupies about 11,000 acres. It's the largest concentration of tall grass prairie left in this state, so I guess this area used to cover, I mean, just a grand portion of the middle of the state, and now there's only about 4% of it left. You know, the prairie land is beautiful and all, but there's another reason people come out here, and that is for the buffalo, AKA bison. And it's kind of the luck of the draw, whether or not you run into some, but it must be our lucky day, because I think I see some right over there. Well, we freaking lucked out. We found not just one buffalo, but a whole herd. 
They're all right over there, just chilling. So you're supposed to stay about 100 yards away from them, which is about the size of a football field, because they will gore you, apparently. <laughs> I guess it's pretty rare, but that's what it's called when a buffalo attacks you? Yeah, something like that. And I don't want to know what that feels like or looks like or anything like that. So we're just gonna keep our distance and use our nice zoom lens. Yeah. But even from this far away, y'all, some of these things are so freaking massive. They look like cars or something. If y'all can believe it, there used to be like 40 to 60 million buffalo roaming this part of the USA. Unfortunately, most of them were killed off and their numbers got down to like the low thousands, if you can believe it. So they, they almost went completely extinct but now I think their numbers are up to about a half a million so you know nowhere near their former glory but no. it's a start they're coming back well that was an amazing experience y'all very hot, very sweaty, but very pretty. But there is one more very important stop we have to make on this trip. Let's do it. If you guys thought we were gonna leave Kansas without getting some good old fashioned Kansas City barbecue, then you don't know us at all. We have made our final delicious stop of this trip. I think we saved the best for last, right? We've gotten German food, we've gotten Swedish food, and now we're getting barbecue food. <laughs> barbecue food. We ended up at Q39, which is on the Kansas side of Kansas City. When you walk in, you're greeted by, of course, the smell of delicious smoked meats, but also all of these trophies and awards from everything from their meat to their burdens to their brisket. You can't see a trophy wall at that. <laughs> if you see a wall full of trophies, you know you're in for, I'm done. That's it, I'm not saying anything else today. What she's trying to say is if you see a wall full of tro trophies, it probably means it's got good barbecue. See, you couldn't even do it. I did it better than you, though. You did. Whatever. <laughs> the star of their menu are the burnt ends and the brisket, you guys. Last time we were in Kansas, we actually got some of the best burnt ends of our life at a place called Joe's. Will these rival Joe's? That's the question, because that was pretty much some of the best barbecue we've ever, we've ever had. That is way too big for one human. No, it's absolutely pretty easy. Well, walk around the corner to my house. Oh, we might have another contender, you guys. These burn ends are bursting with flavor. You get this delicious saltiness, creaminess. They're so juicy, and then a little bit of a crisp from that outside burnt edge. Full disclosure, we've been on kind of that um, intermittent fasting diet. So it's like uh, two o'clock almost, and we haven't eaten at all today. So yes, we're eating every last scrap of barbecue. Maybe even the bones, who knows? They have some award-winning wings that are apparently smoked, grilled, and fried. Oh my God, and I think it's like a chipotle barbecue sauce on there. If you guys remember at the start of this trip, we got attacked by a rooster. Oh, he doesn't like you. <laughs> so, maybe this is revenge. <laughs> Whoa, baby. Y'all, these are just perfection. They're super crispy on the outside. They're so saucy, but they're also so meaty. There's so much chicken on there. It's almost got like a, an Asian tang to it or something like that. And of course, very, very messy. How barbecue should be. How would you be? Well, I think it's safe to say that uh, we officially conquered Kansas. Oh, hell yeah. Truth be told, we've been completely blown away by this state. We never expected to see amazing badlands. We never expected it to be so hilly and so beautiful and have such epic views all over the place. But the time has come. We gotta return our 2020 coachman. She's been a worthy vessel, but uh, I think uh, it's run its course and we're ready to get back to our rig. Yeah, for sure. I miss Clementine so much. Everything we did on this trip will be linked in the description below, so that if you come here, you can just follow our footsteps and have the perfect road trip through Kansas. But stay tuned for our upcoming adventures. Uh, you guys know Clementine's back in the shop right now, and uh, we don't really have a handle on uh, when she's going to be out of the shop, so stay tuned to see what the heck happens. Goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road.